Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Orgodowski of We Are Change Org, and yet another very important update about the multifaceted fast situation developing in the Middle East. And I'll tell you what, there's so much lies, there's so much propaganda from the state, but also censorship that we will be uncovering in this video that it's absolutely staggering to see what is happening right now. And you are truly lucky to be able to watch this independent media broadcast that, of course, is supported and financed by you. Only because of your contributions and support on wearechange.org forward slash donate are we able to survive. There's many different ways you could support us. Ones without even spending a single dime. Click the link in the description right now to support real and independent media. Now, I'm moving really fast here because the story, the situation is extremely fast in itself as just moments ago, literally moments ago, we found out that four U.S. coalition Iraqi soldiers were wounded in a rocket attack on an Iraqi base, which is housing U.S. soldiers. Proving once again that, that, that we're not in the clear. A lot of people have taken a step back and says, look, War has been averted. Look, look, there, it, now we have peace in the region because of the 4G strategic moves by Donald Trump. And I, and I have to keep reminding people that that is not the case. We are at a perpetual war that's been happening for a very long time. The war is against Iran. There are many proxies. There are many wild cards. There are many other groups that are inspired by Iran that are Shia-backed militia groups that are involved here that seriously play a very important aspect that will be escalating the situation from here. As even Hezbollah leaders are publicly saying... That quote, the United States will discover in blood how unsafe the world has become. Which, uh, again, shows that there will only be more escalations from here. It's, it's inevitable. We're not in the clear. There's still a lot to keep an eye on and a focus on. Since, of course, this situation is far more complicated than what the average American on mainstream media is being told. Now, there also has been a massive wave of protests happening in Iran, as many protesters have taken to the streets after the Iranian government admitted that it unintentionally shot down the civilian Ukrainian airliner. This was one factor out of many that made Iranians go to the street to protest their government, calling for the resignation of the Ayatollah. All, of course, as Donald Trump promoted the protests, which made Donald Trump even send out a supporting message in Farsi, which has garnered a lot of support. Now, these protests are significant, especially with the promotion of them by, of course, mainstream media, which, which, which some pundits <laughs> actually said that uh, we won't see the protests in the news and and in in our reality we've been seeing a lot of news about the protests we haven't been seeing the news about the previous Iraqi protest against the Iraqi government we haven't seen much about the protests in France that have been inspired by the yellow vests that are mainly against Rothschild globalist banker Emmanuel Macron, which, which by the way, this is, this is pretty big news. This is very significant news that should inspire a lot of people to understand the true power of demonstrations. But French president Rothschild banker Emmanuel Macron has given up on some of his austerity measures has capitulated, has let the protesters win because of the over-mounting pressure that the people of France put on the government, showing you that demonstrations do work. Now again, when we see these Iranian protests, we do have to understand that these protests have been happening before these latest escalations in the Middle East with the United States. The Iranian government has shut down wide portions of the internet and that it would be a very gross oversimplification to call these good or bad protests. But, but it is important to note here that they do work in favor of 
uh, neoconservative doctrine, which should be understood here, but also shouldn't be the main factor for disqualifying these protests at the same time. The people's voice is important. It does matter. It does make a difference. And this is something, of course, that we selectively hear about in the U.S. mainstream media. And the selecting of which protests we hear about and don't hear about it is critically important as, as information is key. And, and of course, this is why we're also seeing a lot of censorship right now, as even Instagram announced that they will be removing posts supporting Soleimani, the Iranian general assassinated by Donald Trump, to, quote, comply with U.S. sanctions. So essentially, the U.S. military industrial complex is deciding what you can and cannot see. Now, now, obviously, I'm not a fan of Soleimani or any other military government general, but individuals who are, I, I would, I would, you know, want to know about. If someone has this kind of opinion, why censor it? Why delete it? Why block it? Why go over the top to try to shut down those particular voices, but yet again, as we've been warning about for many years, the relationship between the government and big tech is like this, and essentially they do the bidding for each other and their bottom line, not only with seed funding, mass surveillance, but now direct censorship, especially of, of independent media, by the way, that's been getting its butt kicked with, of course, YouTube promoting the mainstream media that has been promoting absolute garbage. Independent critical thinkers, no, that's, no, 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 no. They're, they're, that's going to be censored, which is absolutely ridiculous as much as it is dangerous. Since there's a lot of information that people need to understand about this larger breaking news that is unfolding in the Middle East, and that, of course, is with the greater geopolitical complexity, especially with Saudi Arabia, which Donald Trump is is openly sending thousands of troops to because, well, as as Donald Trump say, Saudi Arabia is, is paying good money for our troops. So we're, we're literally sending our U.S. men, women to Saudi Arabia, their lives, th them being away from their families because some Saudi oil men gave some dollars to Donald Trump. Um, I, yeah. That, and again, I'm not being hyperbolic here. Donald Trump said himself, with Donald Trump saying, quote, we have a very good relationship with Saudi Arabia. I said, listen, you're a very rich country. You want more troops? I'm going to send them to you. But you got to pay us. They're paying us. This is what Donald Trump said which made U.S. Representative Justin Amash rightfully criticize him by saying he sells troops, which essentially he is doing. And why are we sending troops to Saudi Arabia if there was a threat to the existence of Western military targets in the Middle East? If there was a threat against Western terrorism, it would, and it has been coming from Saudi Arabia, as we're getting news right now that more of a dozen Saudi servicemen that were flown and specifically trained by the U.S. military under a special program are being kicked out with that program officially ending. Why? Because there was an act of terrorism committed within this program that actually killed U.S. servicemen. And by that basic justification, shouldn't we be bombing Saudi Arabia since Saudi Arabian servicemen came to the United States, launched a terrorist attack, killed American soldiers. By that justification, uh, you could create a whole nother war here. But obviously, Saudi Arabia, because they, they pay us, they're able to get away with killing Americans and influencing other people to kill more Americans, which they're really good at. And these people that were sent to be trained at U.S. military installations, well, of course, more of them have ties to extremism and also pedophilia. Yeah, what a great idea. Let's bring some crazy Saudi jihadis, pedophiles over here, to train them to be professional killers. I mean, I, I don't... How stupid, how low IQ, idiotic, 
do, do I mean, I just can can you understand this? Can you understand this? They definitely didn't send in uh, their best and their brightest. What does this say? What does this What does this say that, that Saudi Arabia sent soldiers to be trained here that that are committing Western terrorism, have killed American soldiers? What does that say about Saudi Arabia, a country that essentially Donald Trump is groveling? For. Now, we're also getting more sinister news that you should be made aware of, and that is specifically that the U.S. government warned Iraq that it would lose access to its own money in the New York Fed if it continues to move towards asking U.S. troops to leave its country. There, there really, really couldn't be a more of a thuggish, gangster, mafioso act than saying, I will steal all your money in the New York Fed if you don't do what I tell you to do. And that is allowing my strongmen to be in your country and to occupy it, even though you don't want that. This, of course, prompted U.S. Senator Rand Paul to say, quote, end the Fed and the Iraq war, which I agree with 100 percent. And 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 this latest kind of bullying tactic, which, by the way, a lot of people in the outside of the U.S. mainstream media bubble know about and this is why america's reputation worldwide is going down this is why geopolitically the united states has been strategically shooting itself in the foot with such brazen aggressive actions that essentially proved to be worthless other than serving the interests of saudi arabia and of course israel which even then it's it's debatable since it's leading the middle east towards a bigger clash for war and we're being told this is all being done because of an imminent attack, which, which again, the story is being directly contradi contradicted by Donald Trump and U.S. government officials. We're being told by Donald Trump that it was four U.S. embassies, which, of course, is being denied right now by the Pentagon. We're being told that it was going to happen at any moment, even though... U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo says he doesn't know when or where it was going to happen. And again, all of it is just a lie. A lie to try to convince you that hurting, killing, and murdering other people is okay. And it never is. It never should be. Always, we should do everything in our power to avoid that. And if you don't, well, you're, you're, you're just a butthead. I mean, I mean even, even Polish Tusk Man from London, who stopped a terrorist attack in London from a, again, Wahhabist that was influenced by Saudi Arabia. Even Polish Tusk Man is disagreeing with Donald Trump and encouraging the United States to leave Iraq and to not further the escalations in that region. Because again, who prevails here? Saudi Arabia. ISIS is celebrating and praising all these latest aggressive moves, which only embolden, empowers, and preserves their existence. All the while, we sit here like lame ducks, not being helped by any of these egregious moves, only becoming more indebted, more enslaved, and more robbed in front of our very eyes by the big industries, special interests, and few individuals that actually do profit from all of this and that is absolutely ridiculous if you agree share this video right now click share click the url send it to your friend or your family member or make a post on twitter or facebook i'm serious about this because if you don't this video will not get out there because of our message because of our anti-establishment stance because of us looking at both sides of the story honestly we get punished severely by YouTube for doing so, severely by social media for doing so. And the only way for us to survive is for you to share, for you to donate, to keep independent media, independent voices, independent news alive. And because you do that, this is why I end almost every single broadcast by saying, love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.